Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use WinSCP as a tool to connect to a Unix server and make changes to a web page, the HTML, cascading style sheets, or JavaScript, and save and check your results online. I'll also show you how to make some edits to a local copy on the computer or workstation that you're working from. At the end of the lesson, I'm going to show you how to connect an alternative editor to WinSCP if you want a more feature-rich editing experience on your local computer. WinSCP can be used to connect to computers, do basic file management, and transfer files temporarily for you to work with directly where they sit online. It can also be used to transfer files back and forth, file management, and work on local copies. If you want to do more than just transfer files and edit files, then maybe you need to use a text mode Unix interface tool like PuTTY. I'm going to be showing you where to find WinSCP and PuTTY at the University of Regina, but PuTTY and WinSCP are freely available tools that anybody can use and download and configure to run on their Unix server. Current students of the University of Regina can go to the current students link and then find IT support at the bottom of the right hand column. There you'll find a long list of services including a downloads link. You want to follow that and we're interested in Windows downloads. Some Mac downloads are also available and you might find useful software there like Cyberduck which is like WinSCP. For now we're going to stick to Windows downloads. We're most interested in WinSCP, but you might also have some interest in PuTTY toward the end of the semester when you need to start working with your MySQL database, which has a text mode command line that you'll learn about in lab and you might need to work on from home, and also for editing your PHP scripts, or at least running and seeing debug messages, since we don't have a debug server for you to connect to remotely and see the results of those programs if they don't show up in the web browser, that is. All right, let's click on and download WinSCP. You'll need your University of Regina username and password. That's your general Novell one, the one that you use for UR courses and logging into Windows computers, not your computer science one, to access this software. So I'll take a moment to do that, download it, and install it. See you on the other side. Once you've installed WinSCP, you'll see when you start it up that it's already populated with University of Regina servers if you use the University of Regina installer. If you didn't or if you need another server, don't worry, it's not hard. But these are ready to go. You can even edit them to add in your username and password if you're the only one that's using the computer. Now you can create new servers. Just go to the new site section, type in the host name. In this case, I'm going to make a copy of hercules.cs.uregina.ca for me to connect to. Make sure you don't make spelling mistakes. We'll fix that later. And SFTP or SCP are fine for connecting to Hercules. Both are secure and related. FTP, don't use it. Hercules doesn't support it. And if you're on a server that does support it, it's insecure. Your password is very vulnerable. Don't fill in the username or password as you're working unless you know you're the only one using the computer. All right, let's give this a site name. I already have Hercules, so I'm going to use Hercules 2. And OK. Great, there's Hercules 2, just like Hercules, except let's fix that spelling mistake. Click Edit, make any changes you need, click Save, and you're ready to go. Notice the username and password fields aren't filled out here. We don't need to fill them out. Just go down and hit Login. Don't edit. Don't put anything in there it's not worth the effort. When you hit the login button, it'll just ask you for username and password anyhow. If this is your first time connecting to a server from a particular computer, you'll get a warning message. Just press yes, it's fine. But if you see it again on the same computer connecting to the same server and you know you didn't wipe it, worry. Talk to the system administrator or think about whether you've completely cleared out your settings recently. You might be in a man-in-the-middle attack. It might be worth just checking things out. Okay, 
So now that we're in WinSCP, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to make sure that we're in our public HTML folder. You can have other folders for backups of your work, but anything that you intend to publish to the net must be in the public HTML folder, and you must have set up the permissions correctly in your home folder and on the public HTML folder. Of course, permissions must also be set correctly on each of the files for them to be public. And this is going to be interesting for us in the near future. So let's take a look at what that, pay, what that folder looks like. So I'm in my public HTML folder here, and I want to work on this index.html file. So I'll drag that over to my computer. This is the slow and awkward way. There are better ways than this. I'll get to that. I'm going to work on this index.html file by right-clicking and editing. And I can see here that it was worked on by somebody named Sumya, one of the lab instructors for CS215. I'm going to change that to testing and see if I can see that result. So I'm going to save this document and use WinSCP to open it. Right-click, open. There we go. I've got a file that says, this is a paragraph, my name is testing. Fantastic. So I want to put that on the server. Now the, on the server, my file will be in my public HTML folder. So I happen to be www.cs.uregina.ca and I'm working out of a temp account, temp1. That's index, so that'll be my main page. And the name Sumia is still in there. So when I saved, it only affected the local file and not the remote file. This is great if you want to do a whole bunch of edits at once and publish one final working work. Work locally, make sure everything is working correctly locally. If you don't need any subsystems like a, a database or a PHP, this will work. You'll need to work on Hercules if you're doing databases or PHP. So you'll have to get used to editing stuff there more often. Um, that comes later though. So to publish this finalized work with the name testing instead of Sumi, I'm going to drag and drop that from my computer onto Hercules. Yes, I want to overwrite it. And, oh no, by default when you transfer files, permissions are broken. This means that if I go here and refresh, I'm going to see that permission is denied. This will happen every single time I go to transfer a file. The problem isn't hard to fix. I just need to go to properties or find a command line and issue a chmod command. I'm looking to have permission 644. So I click on properties or press the F9 key. I'll bring up the properties menu and I can press RR and get 644 or 0644 for my permissions. Again, you could issue the same with a chmod command at a putty command line and the file name. All right. This is tedious. Nobody wants to have to do this more than they need to. They want to set the permissions for files they want public once and be done. Now, WinSCP is trying to keep you safe. It's trying to make sure that when you send a file onto the server, it is automatically as secure as it can be. So it's forcing all new transfers, all transfers at all, to be restricted permissions. You know that this isn't what you want, so you can go to the Options menu, hit Preferences, and go to Transfer, and we're going to edit the default rules for transfers. Just click default, go to edit, and notice in upload options it says set permissions to read write. Just uncheck that and anything that you upload will take on whatever the default permissions are for the server and if the file already exists it'll leave the permissions in place. Now Hercules is already configured to make new files with restricted permissions of read write for the user only and not to make them public. So you'll have to take all of your new files and explicitly make them public. And they can be private if they've got say answer keys or to do's or readmes that are just meant for you and not for the whole world to see. So I'm going to create a new file directly on Hercules. This is something you can do. You don't have to create them in the lab or anywhere else. You don't have to create them even on your local Windows computer. Just right click, choose new file, and any text mode file you need can be created. You cannot create pictures this way. But I can create a testing.html and a little editor will come up and I'm able to edit my file directly on Hercules. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to do a little HTML page. So my doc type and there's my basic HTML document written in HTML5. Hooray! Save this. Okay. The first time that you save 
a file that you're editing directly on Hercules, you'll need to enter your password again. So I think that's the password. And I'm going to let it remember that for the rest of this session. Good. This file doesn't have correct permissions, so I'm going to edit permissions, F9, and read, read. Okay. So stuff I need to check. That first page I created, I'm going to reload. And I should see that instead of Sumya, it says testing. And it matches my local copy. I also want to take a look at the testing page that I just created. And yes, did it work? Yes, it did work. So I can create and edit directly. Let's apply this. First, just make sure that dragging and dropping doesn't wreck permissions anymore. It appears not to. Let's try that with an edit think that I still have that page open in an edit window. So it says Sumya here. My name is Alex. Save. Drag and drop. Yes. And it says Alex on C. And when I go back, it says with a reload, Alex remotely. So everything's working, permissions problems gone. How about editing the same page so that it goes back to saying Sumia on it and uh, I don't get in trouble with your lab instructor. Mm -hmm. So, don't want this editor or any of the other editors. Goodbye all of you editors. I'm going to work on index.html directly here. Edit. And change that back to S-O-U-M-Y-A save. It didn't ask for a password. I'm going to check the web server. Yes, I'm on the web server. It says Alex in and out like a ninja. Assume you will never know. Don't tell her. All right. So that's how easy it is to work directly on files and not have to worry about transferring back and forth to transfer files to your computer to work for extended periods in your own comfortable home environment and then send your finished results back to the university without having to fix permissions over and over and over again. Hopefully this by itself is really helpful, but there's one more thing I want to do for you. There's a lovely editor out there called Visual Studio Code, which I've already installed on my computer. This is the animal right here. It's not hard to install. Just download it and install it. Um, a quick search for Visual Studio Code will help you to find that. Just go to the download and click on whatever version you need. You can run it on Mac or on Linux or on Windows. Unfortunately, we don't have it installed in the lab. It is possible to do what I'm about to do and integrate the Mac version of Visual Studio Code with a file transfer program that is as powerful as WinSCP called FileZilla. I'm not going to show you how, but trust me, what I'm about to show you on WinSCP on Windows can be done with FileZilla and Visual Studio Code on a Mac and it's wonderful. I'm not going to show you how to be a Visual Studio Code expert because I'm not one. The trick I'm going to show you here will work with literally any editor without using any of the advanced features of the editor. So what are we going to do? I've got Visual Studio Code already installed. I don't need to have a copy running so I'll just close that and in WinSCP once the editor is installed you can set it up as the default editor for various file types. Again, this is under Options. So go to Options, Preferences, Editors. And the default editors are the internal editor, the one we've been using when I click Edit, and Notepad. The internal editor is set up to edit everything. So if you tried to edit a picture, you would see the picture opened up in a text mode. Transfer it to your local computer, use something like Photoshop, or add a rule for JPEGs or PNGs for Photoshop to use it. Like the rule I'm about to show you for Visual Studio Code. Okay, so we're going to add a new thing, an external editor, and I'm going to browse the location for Visual Studio Code. It's, if you've installed it as a local user, it's not obvious where to find it. The installer sort of hints, but it's difficult to find. So you will find it under App Data, Local, Programs, Microsoft VS Code, and you're looking for the code.exe executable. Again, that's in your home account App Data, Local, Programs, Microsoft VS Code. Then click Open. That's automatically going to add instructions for opening the file. 
that you are working on as a temporary in Visual Studio Code. Whenever you hit save, that temporary will be sent over to the server and you'll be able to see the results. It's amazing. Once you have the new rule, make sure that it's up at the top so that pretty much it catches everything. If you want a photo editor, you might want to edit that mask so that it only matches certain types. So if I only wanted to be able to edit HTML documents, I would say star.html here. But I'm going to just treat this as my universal editor and be smart about photos when they come up. Visual Studio Code for everything. Okay, so now when I want to work on my web pages, instead of seeing the ugly text only, no highlighting, nothing smart interface, I'll be able to right click, choose edit, and I will be not in there because it was already open. That was the ugly one. Edit. It'll fire it up in Visual Studio Code, and I will have beautiful syntax uh, highlighting. I will have color pickers for me to work with my colors. Woo! So it's easy to change colors. I will have all of the wonderful features that Visual Studio Code code brings to you when you're working on a web page. Now, it doesn't have all of them because Visual Studio Code can work on entire sets of documents as sort of a, a workspace. You want to have direct access to the file. So if you copy everything over to your local thing, you'll be able to work on your HTML, your CSS, and your JavaScript in a live server that's downloadable as an extension and see the results as you save directly in the web browser, no refreshing necessary. The way that this is going to work for right now um, is any changes that you make in here, this is a paragraph, my name is Sumya, and I'm going to write a little edited in VS code. Okay, so here we go. This is the page right there on the server. It says Sumya. When I press save, the way I've got this set up, it doesn't know to refresh. I have to do that manually, but still. Bingo, there's the edit in VS Code. Beautiful editor, directly connected to the server. It's easy. Hopefully, this makes your semester go really well up to the time that you have to start working with Putty. And Putty is not that bad. Get used to your Unix command line, and you'll have a great semester. Good luck to you. Bye-bye.